Yes, $3. That was, I was the only bidder. Nobody in Southern Ontario of Canada wanted cowboy hats. I don't know why. Hello everyone, welcome once again to MQ. Diane Bryan, the Motley Mix Merchant. Thank you very much for dropping by. As you can tell right away, I'm in a great mood today. Um, I haven't had any sales recently, but I'm in a great mood because I've been unpacking my most recent auction haul, and we're going to go through that in a minute. But first, let me tell you about what's been going on. Um, not much sales-wise in the past four days or so. It slowed down quite a bit after the weekend, uh, over the weekend. But I do have my final numbers for March, and it is the best month I've ever had in the 10 months that I've been doing this now. I sold a total of 39 items in the month of March, well above my one per day average that I always aim for. Um, average sales price was very good. Average profit on each item was pretty good. Um, so yeah, it was a really, really good March, especially the last couple of weeks, which was surprising in a little bit of a way because of everybody being shut down and shut in and uh, social distancing and staying home and not doing much. But because they couldn't go out, a lot of people went online and they were browsing and buying on eBay, that's for sure. So yeah, March was a great month. So between February and March, sold a total of 73 items over those two months. Super, super happy with the way things are going. Still continuing my regular two to three items per day listing run. And that is definitely helping out with the store, with views and all that kind of stuff. So I'll keep going with it. And uh, I finally have some more stuff to list. I was almost to the end of my profit pile. I had been going through the things on my shelves and in boxes and trying to find everything I could to list. And I was almost to the point where I was down to about the last five to seven listable, sellable items that I could find. The rest was all either going to be donated or yard sale material for the coming maybe summer once this is all over with. But uh, yeah, uh, but I got lucky because there was an online auction that was continuing uh, in my area. My regular auction house in Niagara Falls has been holding some online auctions. They've got it set up so they can actually control pickup so only one person at a time can do pickup and that kind of thing so they're able to continue on um, and they're not really open for business they're just letting people pick things up so that's how they're able to uh, skirt around a little bit the um, state of emergency that's going on in Ontario right now and with all non-essential businesses being closed but not technically open for business people are just picking up things they've already purchased online so that's how we're able to keep going with online auctions and they had two of them ended back to back on Sunday and Monday this past week. I picked up quite a few things on Sunday and I picked up a couple more lots on Monday that I haven't even picked up yet from the store. Uh, that was a couple of vases and a lot of 38 78 RPM records. Pretty blurry pictures, couldn't really see any titles, but 78 RPM records, they sell for five to $10 a piece depending on the title and the artist. So. I got 30 plus of them, so for the $3 that I spent, sorry, $4, I had to bid up somebody one time, $4 for these 36 or 38 records, um, I should make a lot more than my money back on that. So I'll show those to you another time and pick out some of the good ones especially, and I'll also show you the two vases. But as for today's video, I'm going to show you a number of items from the haul that I picked up from Sunday's finished auction. And it was a good haul. I did really, really well. Uh, picked up, I think I ended up with eight lots total for a total cost to me of $32. But then here on Ontario, there is sales tax on top of that. Then there was the buyer's premium on top of that, which added up to 26% on top of it. So my entire bill was $40.86 for a whole bunch of stuff. I think I counted it all. There is about 45 listable sellable items so cost per item on everything i'm going to show you averages out to less than one dollar per item and so i know i'm going to make some pretty good money on some of these things and i think it was a, a very very good haul i don't know if a lot of people were not paying attention to online auctions because of what we're going through right now but it was uh but they had good good bidding a lot of the items went really they, I, I talking to my friends when i went to pick up my stuff the next day they had a lot of uh of about 40 or 50 records that ended up going for $200 plus <laughs> and they couldn't believe it. Neither could I when I was watching it happen live on the auction site. But uh, yeah, they had some really, really, really high bids 
for final prices. So they were happy with the sale and uh, I was very happy with the sale and the things that I was able to pick up. Before I get into it, if this is the first time you've been here, I am a Canadian eBay reseller. I pick up all of my items at auction and online auctions and then I turn around and sell them for a little bit of profit. And in the meantime, I'm having so much fun doing this, especially when I get hauls like this and I can go through them and learn things about them and show them to you. And uh, that's why I chronicle it all right here on YouTube so that you can see my successes and my failures and maybe learn a little bit of something along with me along the way. So let's get started, shall we? A lot of fun. Um, some really cool item and items. I mean, if you follow along with the channel at all, by the way, if you'd like to follow along, you can subscribe down below and then hit the bell to be notified every time a new episode is uploaded. So there's that plug out of the way. Um, I pick up most, I do a lot of porcelain and ceramics and vintage stuff and teacups and saucers and that kind of thing. But I also keep my eyes open and pick up things that I think will resell for a good price, especially if I can get them fairly cheap. Um, they had pictures, this is online auctions. You can check things out a week in advance, plus some of them. Um, I checked out some of the things that were for sale and knew what they were worth online. So I picked up a few things that aren't exactly in my usual wheelhouse as far as vintage items goes, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll try and sell them and see what I can get. And that I said that on purpose to lead into the very first item that I'm gonna show you here. I picked up a couple of these cowboy hats couple of very, very nice wool cowboy hats, wool felt. And uh, this one is a brand name Stetson. The brown one is a actual Stetson hat, uh, which you can tell sometimes by the band on the inside, but it also you can see right there, it says Stetson. Uh, good size too, it is a seven, which is fairly large, way too small for my big head. So I'm not even gonna try to put them on for you. Uh, but the brown one is a Stetson. And then the black one is another famous brand. It is Eddie. Chris Eddie is the uh, designer, one of the brothers. It's Eddie Brothers. Um, and they're a very famous Western hat producer since 1929, it says on the band. Nice black one. Now these do have, they don't have really issues. They just need some tender love and care. And I've been looking up on YouTube videos how to take care of a wool felt uh, cowboy hat. And so I'm going to clean them up and uh, reshape the, bra the, the bills. Uh, they're in great shape though, no holes, no stains, no problems at all. A little bit of a sweat stain on the inside of the brown one, if I recall, yeah. But you can get that out with a little bit of cleaning and uh, they're in great shape. I got both of these hats for a grand total of $3. Yes, $3. That was, I was the only bidder. Nobody in Southern Ontario of Canada wanted cowboy hats. I don't know why. So I uh, got them for $3. They sell, once I clean them up, even used ones, they're going to sell from $25 to $35 a piece online. So that's a good return. 10 times the money back. I'll take that all day, every day, any day, as I say. I'm getting back into saying that every at least once per episode for you. I don't want to make you feel like I'm forgetting some of the things I always used to say. So yeah, so yeah, just... An item that I researched and checked out and decided I was going to go for it. I wasn't going to bid higher than, I think my max bid on that was $5. So if somebody had bid it up to six, it was gone. I wasn't going to worry about it, but nobody bid against me at all. So I got it for $3 total. All right, moving on. Got a couple of pieces of my usuals, teacups and saucers. This gorgeous set here. Let's see if it adjusts the brightness for you there a little bit. You can see that. Beautiful with the cottage design on it. This is Royal Vale, very well liked and much desired style of teacup from England. Um, this was part of a bigger lot that I think it cost me six or seven dollars to get. But as I say, average cost on every item is going to be less than a dollar. So this is going to be my usual $29.99 with free shipping. Shipping costs me less than $10 on teacups because of how light they are, no matter where it goes in North America. So. That's going to be a nice little $18 profit item when you consider the exchange in there as well. So yeah, teacups and saucers, I think I ended up with, I'm going to be looking that way a little bit because all the items, are, everything is on the table right over there. So let's see, I got one, two, three, four, four regular teacups, a couple of demi-toss cups, and a couple of saucer-only uh, sets. So 
you know, I'm going to make a good 75 to a hundred dollars on just the teacups alone. And don't forget, I only spent $40 on everything. So yeah, so that was a good one. Uh, next up is these. I want to have a little discussion about these. Oh, that's where I have to tell you something. <laughs> so I was getting ready to do this video. All of a sudden I saw glitter all over my hand and my side of my ear here. There was glitter everywhere and I couldn't figure it out. Somebody has put glitter on the inside of this vase. That's that's from probably the flowers that were, oh yeah, there's tons of glitter in the bottom there. I can be careful, turn this upside down now. But these are, as you can see, red fire glaze, drip glaze type finish. Um, six inch, seven inch bud vases. They are by a company called Here Ontario Pottery. Sorry, Huronia, not Here Ontario. Huronia Pottery, made in Canada. Similar to the lines of Blue Mountain Pottery, probably this company, I would say, was either spawned from Blue Mountain by a former employee or saw how good Blue Mountain was doing back in the 60s and 70s and decided to copy their style. So this is uh, Huronia style, a couple of vases like that. I'll, they're probably 15 to $20 for the pair. Um, and again, worth maybe a uh, dollar and change, $2 for the two of them um, at the auction. So the one that I just banged into as I was putting the vases down, <laughs> doesn't seem any worse for wear. Cute little figurine, Asian wise man, made in occupied Japan. Very desirable, very collectible. Uh, he's in great shape. No repairs to the hat. The biggest thing with these guys is that their hat gets cracked off and people glue them back on. But this one looks like it's in uh, terrific condition. A, a little dirty, but everything's dirty, by the way. I haven't cleaned anything yet. I've just been unpacking it the last day or two. But yeah, that's a cute little figurine. He's going to be in the $15 to $20 range. All of my occupied Japan figurines go for about $15 to $20. So yeah, that's another... If I can make $20 for all 40 items that I uh, bought in this auction, I'll be very, very happy. Absolutely very happy. Up next, this is very, very cute. And um, I didn't know anything about it. I, didn't even, I don't even remember seeing it in the picture when I got it. This is a nice little open top sugar bowl. I've looked it up already. This is an open top sugar bowl. There is no lid for this specifically. As you can see, it does have the flowers painted on the bottom, but it's a beautiful cobalt blue with the gold detailing. It is Royal Staffordshire, sorry, Crown Staffordshire of England. It's numbered uh, and it is absolutely gorgeous in perfect condition with the gold rim and the cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is super hot right now. If you've got anything that's really um, nice vintage porcelain with cobalt blue in it, it's, get it online now because cobalt blue stuff is going for really good prices. So that's a great shape, probably another 15 to $20 for that one. And um, yeah, no, no match. I was hoping that there might have been a sauce, a, a creamer with it, but it's not, there isn't. It is strictly a open top sugar bowl. Some also may call it a cranberry bowl, but it's pretty much mostly used for sugar. So that's that. I got a bunch of these. One box had just a whole bunch of different things in it. One lot was about eight, eight items. Beer steins and glasses was the description on the picture. It's only about three pictures of these things, but this is a gorgeous beer stein. Uh, this looks like I'm trying to figure out. I think he's, I think he's proposing. Does that look like that? What is what that is to you? I think this is a courting jug. Um, that this gentleman is either proposing or doing a German dance around the lady. Um, heavy, heavy lid. Um, I want to say that that is pewter, shined pewter, possibly on the inside. Uh, if the outside is not shiny. So I don't know, I'll have to check that out and see if there's any marks. I have not checked for marks yet. I think it's pewter probably, possibly. Now, the funny thing about this one is, I was trying to figure out where it was made, but unfortunately, let's see if we can see this on the picture. There you go. Okay, you see that? Made in where? Come on, tell me where. It's, there's no... Uh, Location underneath made in it's been rubbed out. Uh, there is very 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 faint Bumping going on just underneath where it says made in I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to figure it out or get the right angle or I just you know There, there is nothing 
it's either been reglazed or that just didn't get stamped properly. So I have no idea where this was made. I don't know. Germany, Austria, Japan, who knows. Um, but I'll do some research. Maybe I can match the picture in the front or, or the design at least. And we'll see if I can get that description proper as far as where it is made and where it came from. And as I said, I picked up a bunch of things that, not a bunch, maybe four or five things that were a little out of my usual realm of expertise and um, information that I know things about, ceramics and that kind of stuff. I picked up, I'm not going to show it to you because they're too big and bulky. I picked up a uh, Alpine car stereo system and an Alpine in-car seven-band equalizer. And you're probably saying, why well, on earth would... I get those but it's one of those things that I looked up when I saw the pictures and thought that maybe that was worth a little bit of money sure enough the Alpine car stereo system uh, if it's working I have to figure out a way to find out if it's working be able to plug it in and that kind of thing it's got the front face plate although there's a little bit of a broken off area but it's got a general face plate that works just fine for it um, it's worth a hundred dollars and the seven band equalizer is worth another eighty dollars and i paid a grand total of three dollars again for both pieces dollar fifty per piece so if i can get them tested and make sure that they're actually working even the non-working ones i'm still going to get forty dollars for them for parts uh, because they are um, really good sound systems for in your car uh, so yeah i another one of those non-vintage things but it's something that i know will sell and that's what I'm looking into these days because I just want to keep growing and growing the store. I am up to 342 items as of this afternoon, listed a whole bunch of DVDs and complete season sets that I had picked up back last November that I found in my profit pile. So I listed a, listed a bunch of DVDs this afternoon, and now I'm up to 342 listed items. It's almost time to upgrade my store. I'm going to have to do the math. I know there's people out there that have done the math already, after you reach a certain point of items in your store, you need to move from the basic store to the next level. I think I'm almost there. I'll have to double check, but I think I'm almost there. I'm 140 listings over top of my base store limit. But, of course, as we all know, if you're an eBay seller, you get 50,000 free extra listings for the next two months, for April and May. Uh, no, sorry, March and April. So I, I can go. I'm not going to upgrade through April, obviously, because these extra listings are all free. I opted into that um, offer from eBay, and so now after you use up your 200 free listings or however many free listings you have with, whether it's a subscription or just your store or non-store, just your listings, there's another 50,000 on top of that. But um, after that's over, come May, I think it's almost time to upgrade the store because I'm getting so many listings in there that it's making sense money-wise for me to upgrade I think it's a 30 I want to say it's a $39 difference something like that $30 difference so yeah I'm paying 27 cents a listing so 100 listings is $27 another 50 is $13 so that's $40 right there so I, I think I'm at the point I'm gonna have to investigate that and be ready to go come the end of April and it's time to upgrade the store because it's it's got enough listings in there it's time to Move on up to the big boys, or the next step up from the big boys. I think it's. I think there's three steps: the beginner, then the next step, and then the big, big ones. So I think I'm coming up on the next one. Pro, I think it is. I don't remember. I pay attention, but I don't pay attention. You know what I mean? Okay, I have some more things to show you though. I wanted to keep going here. I just wanted to stop and tell you about the car stereo systems. Um, yeah, I'll show you this. This was on a lot that was household items. I think it said. There was this, and I think this, and the Occupy Japan figurine, and something else were involved. Oh, I had, there's a set of enamel, two pairs of enamel chopsticks with enamel rests, hand-painted, beautiful. Uh, they came out of a, they, they were purchased at a restaurant, Chinese restaurant in Niagara Falls, <laughs> but a beautiful set, and they do sell. Um, there's vintage, probably from the 70s, 80s. Uh, they sell for $25 if they're really, really nice. And these ones are very, very nice. So, But there's a family member that eats a lot of sushi. And so 
it may be going on to her. Probably. Anyhow, got this beautiful vase with the hmm, what are those? Quick. I I'm I'm asking this time. I'm not I'm not making you guess. I'm asking. Tell me below, what kind of bird is that? Is that a roadrunner? It's not an egret. It's not, I think it's a roadrunner. I don't know, but it's Asian design. I say that Asian design. It's got that kind of a feel to it, Asian feel, but it's not. It is Kaiser of West Germany, and it is by an artist called Kim uh, Masik, Masik, N-O-S-S-E-K. First initial is K. I think her name was Kim, uh, but she'd done a lot of designs for the old Kaiser of West Germany uh, porcelain. There's this one, and then, oh, there was a smaller va a vase as well with a different kind of floral design on it, and it's also by her. I think it's called Arletta. is the design name on the bottom. But these are, this, is, this big one here, probably $20 to $25. The smaller one, $20 at least. Um, both Kaiser brand and West Germany which means prior to amalgamation or reconfiguration or whatever the re word that you use to talk about the Germanys coming back together. So yeah, that was a, that was a good one. I, I, and I say a good. I got a good mix of vases, ceramics, figurines, that kind of thing. Speaking of figurines, if you saw the thumbnail, you saw these. But these are absolutely gorgeous, and I just want to show them to you. They're very very dirty. They've been around a while. But I want to show these to you. Aren't they spectacular? They're a good 16 inches tall. Um, they are chalkware. You can tell from the back. I'll show you the backs. The chalkware. There you go. Um, the number on the back, the date on the back says 1953. I can see it. I can see these being around since the 50s or 60s on the wall of a Chinese restaurant somewhere, maybe. Um, but that's exactly how they're going to be sold as a pair, facing each other like that. He's got tea and she's got a lotus flower. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I'm thinking, I only saw one other set for sale, and it was colored differently. Much more modern, maybe the same mold, but it looks like it had been repainted in browns and golds only. And it was listed for... $70 US. So I think I'm going to be in that range. I'm going to try and put $50 on these at least and see what happens because they're absolutely stunning. They do have to be cleaned up. They're a little dirty. They've been on the wall for a while by the looks of it. But um, yeah, $50 to $60 is my guess on those. I've not done a ton of research. I've looked them up quickly. Saw just the one other set uh, strictly on eBay. Uh, solds, no solds. For the exact same ones and just the one set for sale but uh, i'll check out terra peak and all that stuff a little more closely when i get into researching it but uh they're gorgeous i mean and they're perfect condition there is not a chip not a mark not a scratch on either of them so they're going to go for prime money i think and uh, they, I, i'm very very happy i got those i think those ones were with some other asian decor that cost me five dollars total so yeah that that lot was uh that was and that was a last minute one nobody had bid on that at all up to the start of the auction and actually it came up as one of the eight featured items in the last two minutes of their sale and nobody had bid on it yet so i bid three somebody else bid four i bid five that was going to be it for me if someone had bid six dollars it was gone i wasn't going to take it but my five dollars was the high bid i guess they decided the same thing i did that they didn't want to go higher than five dollars and after I looked them up and after I see what those are like, I'm so glad I did and that I didn't lose them for one dollar <laughs> for the sake of a dollar. Uh, so yeah, um, that's that's a that's a great set, great great set. But they're not the best set of the entire auction. I, I'm just going to show these to you right away. These are hand blown. There's no seams. There's ponto marks on the bottoms. I'll show you that on one of them in a second. Hand blown, hand painted, glass, decanter, lidded compote. And I'll, now that this lidded compote, fairly basic. It's got the lid. It is. I, I, I'm pretty. I'm sure this is the right. This is a set. The lid is a different color than the body. 
but I'm pretty sure this is still a set. The lid fits. It, it's the exact same style of painting as on the on the decanter. Um, so I just think that the body, because it's thinner, is a little bit lighter of this blue opaline stuff, uh, opaline of glass. It is absolutely gorgeous, as you can see. So yeah, here's the here's the pontils on the bottom. Oh, this one doesn't have a pontil mark because this is joined here. You can see that the bottom goes down to a point at, at that a certain section, and then at that section is when this glass piece on the bottom of the pedestal is connected to the body of the compote. So that's a nice set. But anyhow, these decanters. This is one of two. I have two of these. And the way these are, some people advertise them as perfume bottles. So they could be a perfume bottle. But you see the, the stopper? The stopper alone sells for $20. This is also your shot glass, if you're using this as a decanter. You've got a built-in shot glass on the lid, on the stopper. But it is absolutely gorgeous. There's a better look at it. There's the ponto mark, so it's obviously blown, hand-blown glass. The 40 on the um, bottom matches the 40 on the stopper on the bottom. There's a 40 there as well. So that is matching the number here. And that, that is pre-glaze. So that number is on there. I think it's glazed. No, it's that's written on there. But it, it it's it's on. This one's a forty. The other one says twenty five, and a number of them that have been sold on eBay also talk about the fact that those exact same numbers are on the decanters. So I think that's a numbering system used by the makers, whoever it was. And that's the other question that I have to figure out. Some of these are sold as French. One other set, almost exact same as this one, somebody sold it as it was Czechoslovakian. So I don't know which it is. I think, by the, just going by sheer numbers, I think these are French. Um, there are many, many, many more like this. Not quite the exact same shape as this bell shape here but in the same style of glass and the same with the stopper that looks like a shot glass as well. There's many, many more of these that are um, attributed to being made in France compared to the one that I found that was supposedly Czechoslovakian. So I'm going to lean to France. I am still going to do tons more research on these. These cost me $6 between the two decanters and the compote. Um, Six dollars total. Nobody bid against me after I got it up to six dollars. Everything started at three. We ended up at six and nobody bid against me. I was going to go to ten dollars on these, maybe even fifteen, because I looked these up. I looked these up. <laughs> this decanter, if it is French, if I can positively identify it as French, this decanter sells for an average for $125 for one. I have two and I have a matching compote. If it's French, if it's Czechoslovakian, it's about $40 to $50 for one decanter. So I really hope it's French. <laughs> um, um, I will do some research on it, a lot of research. I will be asking if you're here from the uh, thrifters and pickers group on Facebook. I will be posting pictures of this and asking all of our experts what they think it is as far as if anybody knows if anybody's a glass expert in the group I'm going to ask them if they think it's French or Czechoslovakian. Um, I really hope it's French because that would be amazing find uh, an amazing pick on the online auction and as I say I've got two of the decanters whether it's a decanter or a perfume bottle and one of the compotes. That's what makes me think as well that it's French because if people are advertising these as perfume bottles, then you've got this as well to sit beside it on the lady's dresser with powder or whatever inside. I don't know. That makes sense to me. So I'll, I'll research it. I'll let you know what I find out. And 
Um, regardless, I paid six dollars for all three pieces. Um, they're going to make upwards of a hundred dollars, between a hundred and three hundred dollars for the three pieces once everything is listed and sold and it will sell. This is definitely going to break the thumbnail curse. Oh, I didn't put them in the thumbnail. I was going to use them in the thumbnail. I just remembered that I used the other Chinese figurines instead, the wall hangings. So no no thumbnail curse on the decanters. Let's see if anything happens as far as that goes with the wall hanging figurines. That that thumbnail curse, I'm telling you, it's a thing. If you have, if this is the first time you've been here, I've talked about the fact that most of the items that I've used in my thumbnail all the way back nine months ago, I still have them. They haven't sold. Less than 10% of my thumbnail items have sold. So I don't know what it is with that. It's the curse of the thumbnail. So anyhow, I'm hoping to break that with the Chinese figurines. But uh, yeah, so anyhow, that is a look at half, not even half, one third of my haul from my online auction this past Sunday. And it's been great. As you can, hopefully you can hear it in my voice compared to my last video, especially. I am in a much better mood right now when it comes to the items that I have and the things that I'm going to be selling now because I picked up some great stuff at this auction. And I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, check out online and in-person auctions. If you're a thrifter or a picker and you want some items at really, really dirt cheap prices, especially if you're not in a major, major city, if you're not in a major metropolitan area, and some of these online auctions are happening that happen to be near you, you're not going to get a lot of competition and you're not going to get a lot of bidding against you and you're going to get some great items for a great price. Um, so we'll see. I, I, I scored so big on this online auction and I am really looking forward to seeing what some of the stuff ends up being, first of all, like the decanters and B, what it goes for sales-wise. So I'm going to be busy with that. That'll keep me busy for yeah, a week maybe. Uh, but I do have a couple other vases and the records and a few things left from my profit pile to list. And then I'll keep searching out other online. Actually, I already know that my auction house is having another one that ends this coming Sunday, but we'll see. They don't have a lot of stuff in that one that I'm interested in, but I'll keep my eye on it. Maybe I'll have another auction hall video next week as well. So anyhow, that is how things are going here. Um, really, really excited to get moving here with the next 10 days or so with this online haul and get it all cleaned up and listed and go on from there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are staying well, staying home. Um, it just keeps getting crazier and crazier every day, doesn't it? Everything changes day by day. It's just unbelievable times we are living in. And this is history. If you've got children or grandchildren, have them do a journal of how they're feeling and what's going on and everything that's taking place in their homes and in the world that they can see anyhow. Because this is living history, folks, and we're living through it. So, anyhow, I'm not going to get too deep into it today. I'm just going to say, I hope everybody is doing well. Do your part. Stay home. I've only left the house to pick up these items, to ship items, and to get groceries. It's the only three reasons I've left the house. And that's all I'm going to ever leave the house for over the next six to eight weeks however long this lasts. So have yourself a great week, everybody. I will see you again very soon. Take care. And another episode of M Cubed will be around again next week. Bye for now. Cheers. Mm -hmm.